you stake your claim, you plant your flag and you start a record label. It's very, very easy to be honest. You know, we do, I mean, literally all you have to do is print a couple of postcards and sort of send off a demo to be caught on your record label. It's very, very easy. You know, and I think, um, especially dance music um, of the early 90s really let you do that again. It was that really very free-spirited way of making DIY music in your bedroom and sort of, sort of selling it and producing it and getting heard by a greater audience. And that was the greatest thing, I think, since the punk or whatever people call the post-punk era that happened, sort of, you know, you could sort of make music quite economically and get it heard. And, that, and that's what, that, was, that was the main appeal to me, to be perfectly honest. I can make, you know, instrumental electronic music without having, a, having to have a band and stuff, which was like really, you know, that, that, was, that was fantastic. And that was my main interest, to be honest. I think the common, if, the, if there was a common element about the downwards of the Birmingham sound, it wasn't, it was just a complete and desperation, isolation of where we were. And I know that's like a well trodden path that lots of other people have done, but I think it, to us at that particular time when we were like in our early 20s, it was, we felt it was quite unique and we felt we were on the edge of something. And you know, I think that was, you can't stop that youth urge because like you haven't got the weight of history behind you, you haven't got people telling, well, you know, oh my God, you know, the, the Velvet Underground did that before, you know, and stuff like that. We, we, even though obviously we were aware of that, but it was just like we, we, we were kind of, we, we, especially with, like, you know, the dance music thing, we were kind of aware that we were on the press, you know, the sort of the edge of something new, and that was kind of really, really interesting. And, you know, then it was great. It wasn't this sort of scene that it, maybe it's become this well, you know, very well-oiled sort of business machine that it has become. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, who cares? You know, of course, it was. It's there to be taken. I think I was, I suspect I was, I think like history will probably sort of say I was there in the beginning. I have actually no knowledge of being there in the beginning of anything, but I probably was. But the thing is, the Samuel District is a label that, well, I don't know if it is a label, it probably is a label. I suspect it is a label. I can't be sure, but other people are more sure than me of it being a label, it's a, you know, but the thing is, all I can say is like, it really took root and took sort of shape when David and, um, and Juan, why Mendes got involved with it and sort of developed it and really gave it its soul and you know especially Dave and Juan you know they sort of really had this urge to sort of create this sort of new thing and stuff and I like anything I'll go along with it I think you know I'm, I'm, I'm si yeah we'll, we'll, we'll situations we'll just drift with it we'll see what what happens let's let's just see and if it works it works and that, and that was fantastic and I think Okay, we went, I went to New York in that really classic summer of 1996. So I mean, I'm not too sure anybody is alive or aware anymore of what was happening then, but like it was that whole sort of like happening of the Michael Alec and like the club, the sort of the downtown New York club kids see and the murders and our soundtrack provided the whole, what we were doing with Dale was provide this bizarre soundtrack. I met Dave and we were like, you know, first time ever I was alive on, you know, dance floors in New York, and they were playing our music that I recorded in the bedroom maybe like six months beforehand, in, you know, in, Bur you know, in Birmingham, and it was it's very bizarre, surreal, surreal experience that I was actually experiencing, and I'll never forget, and it was just, and it was just New York, it's intoxicating, and if it happens on the dance floors in New York, it was happening anywhere, and I was, I met Dave, and I was... Well, I, I think when, when Kwan I met was, um, at it was it was sort of the, the end of an era of, of, of New York, like a, 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 the the seedy underbelly of, of New York, and and, a, and after that it kind of disappeared, and, and New York has become something completely different. But um, I think the reason why Carl and I connected is because he was very familiar with that side of New York, just from the music that he was brought up on, and and what he saw from England and then when he came to New York, I, w I was living on 30th Street between 7th and 8th in, in Midtown Manhattan and um, it, New York at, at that point still, it was the very end of that, that era of, 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 of New York nightlife and, and, and yeah, I, I think we just really connected on that. And and it was like, you know, it, it was this really, really
bizarre, very vivid experience that I had of New York at that particular time. I feel massively privileged to be there. And Dave was pretty much the person who, um, who sort of showed, who was my guide through that, you know, and it was fantastic. You know, we had, you know, you had this, the place of Purchase Street, we had this fantastic view, the studio that we recorded, you know, we had. You know, there's various people come in, you know, Beltram would come in one day, you know, Damon Wilder come in the next day. It was all these people passing through. It was very sort of, this sort of, very, very sort of trending group of people. It was keen, you know, sort of flowing through this place. That was, you know, it was fantastic. It was really, it was a great, great time. And that's how we very much connected, you know, and I think I like and, and, and I think we connected on, you know, this, this same era of New York that was Desiteria to, the fun house to and and, and it to was hurrah. hurrah and people like Arthur Weinstein and Peter Gation and um, even Carl being from England, I think he was f really familiar with e even not being from there. Um, he, it, it was easy for him to relate because of the musical history and and what he grew up on and. Then us meeting and 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 exploring New York and it it was just it, it made complete sense somehow. Yeah, as things were, and, that, and, that, and that's how everything sort of you know it, it was very it's quite natural in a very unnatural way. Well, I mean, when I was growing up as a kid in New York, um, it was. It seemed like it was easier to become in in touch with electronic music because it was it was at that time it was radio music and I, I, I grew up in Brooklyn across the street from like a, a, a membership swimming pool that on Saturday nights they had dance parties and you could hear a mix of everything from Soft Cell and the Human League to Arthur Baker and Africa and Bambara and, and Kraftwerk and um, you know even cars driving by on the street you, you, you'd hear divine you know it's like um, and, and it's it's something that you can't really experience in New York through the radio and through popular culture anymore so um, I was lucky enough to be brought up during an era where electronic music and dance music was radio music. I don't know, I, I think we've developed a pretty unique a unique way of performing. Um, I don't think there's anyone that that performs the same way we do and it's it's a a hybrid of of it has a very vinyl feel to it, but it's all played digitally, and um, yeah, I think we use two laptops and two controllers, but we don't sync up, and, and there is a human feel in the correction of, of matching beats and stuff like that, and we queue up on headphones, and so... There's an uncertainty to it. There is there's, 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 there's uncertainty in that, and there's a certain amount of, of chance, which is great. That's what about any rock and roll show, techno, whatever you call it, performance show. That's yeah, I mean, there's a, there's always this debate of uh, digital versus vinyl, and a sample district is a very vinyl collectors, vinyl driven type of label, but we don't play vinyl. We play on, we play digital files on, on laptops, and I think it, it, it's kind of ironic but at the same time um, what we're able to create by playing this way is, is something that you can't do on turntables and
of DJ and live. We play our own material and Sam Wilson Street material, um, we, and we play live edits of that mixed with other people's music. And it's just, uh, I mean, this, I mean, this is the point you see. These type of questions are, we have to blow this out of the water because, I mean, to be honest, what, you know, there's so much definition placed upon people these days, what they have to play, what style of music they have to play, and how fast they have to play, and what, from what era they have to play and stuff. It's just like completely ridiculous. It's just like, well, sure, I mean, okay, you know, you have to, everything's appropriate and within, you know, it has to be sort of appropriate for the time, you know, what you're going to play and stuff. But I think everything should be open. I mean, the, well, where I come from, the great, you know, the sort of, it was that whole mishmash of things that were great, sort of thing about, you know, people going about the fucking British, you know, 1988 British rave culture and everything. The only good thing, well, one of the few good things from that was, like, you could play a lot of the very, you could, you could play the Stone Roses into Renegade Soundwave, into Fad Gadget, into fucking Einstutz and the Neubau, into fucking the Birthday Party, into, you know, into, into like, you know, Nexus 21, into, you know, Cabaret Voltaire. You could do that, but, like, now it's sort of so specific and stuff. People are like are almost there with clipboards saying, fucking hell, you can't you can't play that. That's like you know, that's like out of the BPM that, that's out of the BPM region stuff, gonna get the fucking BPM sort of or like tech you know, the sort of like um, I don't know, the sort of the electronic police on you, they're gonna fucking they're, they're gonna take they're gonna take you away and stuff. So I think in a way what we're trying to do, we do realise the way things develop and stuff, but we are sort of still trying to develop the spirit of what was I guess where we come from and stuff, but we still try to sort of make it quite broad the spectrum of what we play really. What what Sam Walt District has become, I don't think that's I don't think it's the way that it started, but I think what Sam Sam Walt District has become is a, a a conglomerate of John, Carl and I working together and it, a, a middle ground of all of our influences from growing up and <coughs> tying together a lot of things that most people wouldn't correlate, but it com completely makes sense to us. At the very root of it all, it, 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 Samuel District is what the name implies, and that's Birmingham and Birmingham Techno. And even though John and I are not from Birmingham, we were heavily influenced by everything that Paul did with Downwards, and for oh, lack of a better term, it's updating modernism. I, I, personally, I think that what you hear in Samuel District is um, a distilled version of everything that Downwards was pointing towards, and and perhaps a network as well and stuff yeah. like network. You know, network before that because you have to remember. You know, without network, there'd be no like, there'd be no, there'd be no, there'd be no Detroit sort of thing. So, like, well, there would be, there would be a Detroit, of course, there'd be a Detroit, but the sort of the, the export, you know, the way they were exported and stuff. What's because you, of Cold Cat and stuff? What, what was it you said that time? Like, um, Central District is like the last burning ember of, of, like, you know. Birmingham is. What was that? That was quite good. What's yeah, that? no, it was. It, it, you I've know, got Bur that. Last burning ember of what? The Industrial Revolution. The last burning <coughs> end of the Industrial Revolution, that's exactly what I said. That was really quite good, actually. And... I did say that.